in the last video, we were discussing why this algorithm is useful for in the case when you want to remove user input from the determination of which one of these temperature dependent change point model shapes to use when you're trying to do an MNV project. And we went ahead and we discussed and we said uh, what what are the three tests that we were going to use for this? We called it a shape test, a significant test, and a data population test. So in this video, we're going to go over what I meant by the shape test. So let's look at the 5P model to start. And this is one shape that you could have. But really, when this model just has an equation form that looks something to the effect of your y is equal to, we'll use capital letters for our constants, one constant plus another constant plus d x e minus x plus. So this really is the model form of a 5P model, and it has no say as to whether these coefficients here end up being positive or negative. There's nothing fixed about these coefficients being a certain sign. And so what you will result in is a model that has a slope section on a lower end of your x variable as a slope section at the higher end of your x variable, and it just connects them with a horizontal line. And so there's four combinations that you could have of signs. There's two and two, so two times two. So if the, they're both positive, this form would give you the shape that you saw above. So if we say this is C and this is E, if it's positive, B is positive, that means when X is greater than C, this, this results in a positive value, and as X gets bigger and bigger from C, which means you're getting further and further to the right here, you get a bigger and bigger increase. And the same from this side. So when X is less than E, this value becomes positive, and the farther X is away from E, or lower on this scale and if this is positive the more this is going to increase so I hope you realize that and again this this superscript here means that you evaluate what's in this parentheses if it's negative you map always to zero if it's positive you map to whatever value that was so if it was two you get two if it was three you get three if it was negative two you go to zero negative four you also go to zero and so that's how these two slopes don't interfere with each other. Only one is ever in play. And actually, when you're in between E and C, you actually, both of these things will be zero, and you're just left with the constant A, which is related to this level. Now, that was just one of the four combinations. You could have this slope be like this. You could have it be like this. Ooh, that's a bad line. Or you could have this upside down U shape. Now, in reality, none of these really make much sense. Now, you could justify this in a several several ways, and we did this we justify it in two different ways. One is that you always wanted these graphs to asymptote at zero. So remember, this is always an energy on the y-axis, and so the zero value here is a true zero. It's the absence of energy. It's not as though it's Fahrenheit, where zero Fahrenheit really is not as significant as, as zero energy. Zero energy is zero energy. There is no negative energy. And so you really don't want this, you want any of these plots to, to not cross this x-axis. This is bad. And if you would do it here, 
this would continue on and it would cross bad. And the same thing here. The other argument is to say, okay, this would be, this range here is when the building's in balance or there's, it's temperature independent, a balanced temperature. And it should be, it can be argued that if you're outside your balanced temperature, that the amount of energy it takes to get back to that level has to be greater than where you are. And so if you're not at a balanced temperature, you should be going up on this y-axis scale. So we can see this perhaps, uh, we'll see this asymptote idea a little more clearly with the 4P model. So a 4P model is also has several shapes. And it can have actually six different combinations because we're going to include the, you have two slopes, but you also have a difference of which slope is bigger. So if that doesn't make sense, let's, let's draw some of this out. So let's say for a 4P cooling model, I guess, or well, you could have this shape. You could have this V shape where you have, this is a negative slope and a positive slope, or depends on how you set the, that formula. You could have a shape that looks like this. You could have a shape that looks like this. And there's, We'll draw the other ones out right away too. We have the opposite to this one. And then you also have, let's make sure I do this right, something like this and something like this. Now, this model is okay. This gets a green, this gets a green check mark. It's very similarly related to this model, which was okay, except now that this, this region here this, this is delta x, you could call it. This is going to zero in this case. So that's good. But now we have these models here, which are, could be very, if you have the same data set, they could be very similar in terms of their fits. But what's important about these two is that if you were to instead, this is two straight lines, Imagine you replace this with many straight lines and you actually got some sort of curve. This is looking like it's asymptoting towards zero. Excuse me if that's the right way to describe that. Whereas for this, this case, this is not. This is concave. The concavity here is forcing this to look like it's going to cross the x-axis. And so this is no good, while this is good. And what's the difference between these? In this case, this slope, slope 1, is greater than this slope, slope 2. So that's the difference. You, you calculate these two slopes, and you know this one is greater than this one, and they're both, in this case, negative sloped, so this is okay for the same argument as to why this is not okay. These are both going across the x-axis. This is the same thing. This gets a no. This gets a yes. Again, if we were looking at it, if we put this with a curve, this looks like it's going to not cross the x-axis or that zero energy line. This, however, would. So this gets a no. And so you can you can do this for all the shapes. And we did this. And so actually let me bring up the figure that has this. So let me copy oh, one second and paste. So here we go. So we start, here's the five P again. Same same idea. This is okay. Green check mark. If we had any of these three models, we have to reject that. For the 4P shape, this V, 
this slope and this type of model where it again isn't going to cross the zero energy line those are all okay 3p models again here if you extend this in either direction it's never going to go to negative energy this will so that's not good and for a 2p model you can argue both of them are reasonable whether it's a slope that looks like that or looks like that depending on your situation and so those two are always okay if you get to that point but what we'll see is that we're gonna try the first hypothesis is look let's try this model because if it does work and it does fit the shape it'll have the lowest error but we only want to use it if it really really makes sense and that's going to be the job of the next two tests which I hope you'll join me when we do those next videos.